Now, I've seen some broken brawlers before, but come on, Supercell. This is getting completely out of... Hey, what? He's currently broken? Don't... Don't show him! Danny, you can't stop me! Oh. So clearly Hank was broken in the developer's build for a bit, but he's all fixed now and I'm going to show you what he can actually do. Hank is a tank, like, like no, literally, he's a tank. And he's an epic brawler. He will become available to buy from the shop or unlock in early June. He has 9,000 hit points at max level and when you hold down his attack, he will charge up his main shot until it reaches maximum damage, the, a big, big old balloon. Now, once you release it, it'll deal 3,000 damage, which is a ton, but it does take three full seconds to charge to max. Now, you can also just tap the auto-aim and it'll shoot in a much smaller area and for vastly less damage. However, the craziest thing about his shot is that it can shoot through walls. That's right, you heard me. Big balloon through the walls, it makes perfect sense. Now, his first star power called It's Gonna Blow gives him 20% extra movement speed if his main shot is 80% charged or more. So if you're using this star power, it's gonna be a good idea to keep his big shot charged as much as possible. Now, his second star power is called Take Cover, and it makes it so that if you are near a wall, you will gain a shield that reduces your damage taken by 20%, which, considering that his shot shoots through walls, this is actually a really good star power for him. But that's not his only defensive utility, because his second gadget, called Barricade, also gives him a shield, reducing the damage that he takes by 40%, while his other gadget, Water Balloons, will cause whomever is hit by his next shot to be slowed down. Now, for his super, he fires off six fish torpedoes all around them. These will deal 1500 damage each and they will travel until they hit a target or a wall. Now the strange thing is if you center yourself on a target and use a super all of them can hit and when they do they deal 10,500 damage which means there's actually a seventh torpedo in there somewhere probably like hits at his feet. Now for these interactions I tested many different ways of doing them with Hank. From fully charging each shot to just tapping auto-aim. And while it may seem counterintuitive, for these tests, he performs the best by fully charging his first shot and then, just after that, tapping auto-aim for the rest of the interaction. And trust me, I did a bunch of testing to find out. I even put Hank versus Hank and one using a charged up attack and one used the little shots. You can see who won. Now since Hank is a tank, let's start him off against the other tanks just to see how he fares. Now Hank is a very different kind of tank. Aside from his first shot, if it's fully charged up, he doesn't have much burst damage at all with his main attack. Now he can fire off shots relatively quick, but they do very little damage. Now when you compare that to something like Bull who has immense burst damage, well, yeah, that happens. At the end of the day, this is what it boils down to. Hank kind of gets bullied by the other tanks. Daryl stomps him, and Jackie's counter crush makes that 3k shot hurt even more. He does, however, get a win against BB, but then he goes back to his losing ways against Meg before he finally gets his last win against Buster. Now, as grim as this looks, I got some hope for you Hank fans. Now, aside from his main shot being fully charged, there's really not much burst damage here, but tanks like to sit behind walls and get position on other brawlers, and Hank can do this and vastly more deadly than the other tanks. So you can't just sit on the other side of a wall against Hank. He has the positional advantage because he can shoot through those walls, and his super is going to be his not-so-secret weapon. This super can literally one-shot Frank with the sponge star power, and if you get five of those torpedoes to hit, you get your super back instantly, meaning it's not unlikely that you can cycle supers on multiple enemies that get within your hitbox. Hank's super is absolutely crazy good. Now there are some brawlers that can pump out significant damage, and we see that on full display here when Hank faces off against the damage dealers. Now Shelly may have gotten a speed buff and she's faster, but she doesn't need speed when she's already close up. And 8-Bit is one of the hardest hitting brawlers in the game and 9,000 hit points? Yeah, that's just a warm up for him. That being said, not every brawler here does well. 
Spike has way too little health, and Rico, well, he's kind of in the same boat. Carl's shots are just too darn slow unless there's a wall around, and Surge, yeah, he can unload shots fast, but 9,000 health is a lot to chew through. Colette deals significant damage, but without her super, she can't finish him off, and Colt, he's gone faster than when my dad left for milk. Where'd you go, Dad? Both Eve and Lola, they give it a good old college try, but both end up on the losing end. And as strong as RT is, it's not enough to destroy that fishbowl on tracks. Now, in a game, I think it's going to be a little bit tougher for Hank. Aside from a couple of these brawlers, none of them are going to really want to get up close and personal to you, so you're going to have to try to gain position and use his ability to shoot through walls to your advantage. And if you can do that, well then, you're going to have a good time. But if not, well, it's, it's going to be a long day. Up next, we have the artillery brawlers. And if you've seen enough of these 1v1s, you know how this goes. The throwers absolutely get dunked on. And that's not changing today. Especially not with the massive amount of hit points that Hank is packing. I mean, really, none of these brawlers stand a chance against Hank here. And that's pretty apparent. Now, I wish I could tell you thrower mains that it's going to get better. But remember when I mentioned that he can shoot through walls? Yeah, so he can shoot through walls. The range on it is pretty dang impressive too, which means no thrower is safe, just sitting behind a wall when Hank is on the other side. Hank is a tank that is a thrower counter. That being said, as a thrower, you are going to be able to hit shots on him a little bit easier because his hitbox is really large and he doesn't move super fast. But at the end of the day, if you're a thrower and Hank's in your lane, yeah. Switch lanes. Now when you pit the assassins up against Hank, it's kind of a mixed bag here. Some of them are able to stand toe to toe with him and take him out like Buzz is able to do, even without his stun. Fang also comes really close without his super, but Edgar doesn't even need the super. With his star power fisticuffs equipped, after the initial blast from Hank, Edgar just straight up out heals Hank's damage. Kind of crazy. But then there are matchups like against Crow here, who just flat out has zero chance of beating him without a super. Although, because of Hank's hitbox, he can take him out with one super and one shot. Now, Leon comes really close to sealing the deal, and of course, if you were to surprise attack Hank, you shouldn't have much problem taking him out with Leon. Mortis, however, just flat out runs out of shots before he can get close, and Stu doesn't really have the sustained damage to pull it off either. Now, in a game, however, I think Stu is going to eviscerate Hank. Hank will struggle mightily in a game trying to get within range of Stu, and I think most of these assassins will actually do rather well in a real game. If you're playing the assassin, you're not just gonna like go in for an attack on Hank when he's got a fully charged balloon shot. But if you get the drop on him, he just doesn't have the burst damage to take you out. Now, assassins normally shy away from attacking tanks, but I think this is going to be an exception to that rule. Unless Hank has his super, then yeah, you probably want to think twice before diving in on that one. Now, the support brawlers are going to have a hard time facing off against Hank here in these interactions. Now, as you can see, they pretty much all get rolled over by this shrimp in a tank, but there are a couple exceptions. Pam easily has the damage, health, and health regeneration with Mama's Hug to take down Hank. And Max, with her onslaught of bullets, fares pretty well herself. Now, of course, Byron has like literally zero chance of winning this interaction, but that's not a big surprise. Now, to take down Hank, you're going to need to put out a lot of damage. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have the most hit points if you can avoid his big charge shot, but these brawlers, for the most part, don't have a ton of damage, so I think that they're going to find dealing with Hank rather unpleasant. Now that's not to say that this is a bad matchup, because actually I think it's decently fair. Hank's not going to deal a ton of damage, but he can soak up the hits, and if you're playing Hank, you're going to need to take the slow approach to these brawlers. Wear them down, get into position, and you're going to do just fine, but if you can't do that, it's going to be a drawn out fight for sure. Now in terms of mismatches, this one right here is a big one. Marksmen don't have a lot of hit points and, well, I mean, just take a look at Hank. Yeah, just, just look at it. Now to make matters worse, 
it's really hard to get a fair matchup when you have a tank and a marksman in these interactions, but toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Hank two-shots many of these brawlers. They just don't have the hit points to be up close. Now, even if you place Hank all the way back at max range like I did here with Piper, he can soak up the hits, drive right up to her, and pop that water balloon, and, well, goodbye, Piper. So while these interactions might give you an idea of what it might look like if you get surprised by Hank, I mean, there's not too many cases where this massive thing is going to sneak up on you. The new brawler Maisie, though, comes very close to taking him out, just standing there toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And in a game, she's going to very easily be able to deal with him as she has the defensive tools to do just that. And as the other marksman in a game, you're going to be able to hit your shots on him pretty easily as he's not super fast, yet he's super wide. So it's pretty simple. Hit your shots and try not to let Hank get position. And as a Hank here, you can utilize that health to soak up some of the shots and take up residence close to these long range brawlers behind a wall and make their life miserable. I mean, all in all, this one's not like a great matchup for either party, depending on the map and the mode. Both sides here are going to need to play it carefully. And our final category here is the controllers, and we see a wide variety of brawlers face off against Hank. Now, while some brawlers like Griff use their super to control the field, in these fights, their superior damage is more than enough to burst down Hank. Other ones like Willow, I mean, they can't hardly make a dent in that massive health pool before being dispatched. Lou, however, is able to get a freeze off, but simply doesn't have enough shots to finish the job. And other ones like Bo is just a dang close fight between these two brawlers. But for the most part, we see brawlers that have too little health and too little damage to take out Hank in close quarters. Even Otis with his tremendous damage can't finish the job and Ems has to be a bit too close to get full damage in these tests. So all in all, it's a mixed bag here. But once again, in a real game situation, I think many of these brawlers will do rather well against Hank, as long as they can keep him from getting positioned behind a wall, which admittedly is going to be tough to stop. So then we have seen Hank 1v1 versus every other brawler in the game. What are my thoughts on him and how good do I think he is going to be? Well, initially when I first started playing him, I'll be honest, I thought he was going to be horrible. His charged up shot is great, but in practice, it's going to be tough to fully charge it all the time. However, the fact that he can shoot through walls is just too strong to be ignored. He's going to be able to play the positional advantage on pretty much every brawler in the game. And while no, he can't out damage another tank at close range, he's going to be able to take cover behind a wall and just simply own that space. Combine that with his star power that gives him a shield when he's by a wall and yeah, you got a problem on your hands if he takes up residence on your side of the map. His super is insanely strong, although at the same time, insanely boring. But maybe seeing big numbers makes up for the lack of creativity with his super. So overall, while he isn't the style of brawler that I personally like to play, there's no doubt that he is a strong brawler. I'm gonna give him like a seven and a half out of 10. That could be higher if I actually like found him fun to play. I, I just don't. But that's just my take on it and that is definitely not official. Oh, brother, this guy stinks!